case was a complex case, since it involved an intricate web that included 42 entities in Mexico and many more abroad, which performed a wide range of economic activities to justify financial transactions, formed to provide professional money laundering services for all types of criminals. The organization provided the services to its clients through a network of brokers that was supported with false invoices and shell companies to simulate business relations. The brokers will charge the organization between 1.5 and 3% of the amounts of the issued invoices as commission. Each entity had a very specific role in the operation, since it provided one of the offered services, including cash management and currency exchange, among others being the more abused, the national and international wire transfers. In early 2013, the UIF's Comprehensive Risk Analysis Computerized Program detected a series of related SARS, one of which contained high-risk elements. The latter was sent by a securities brokerage firm in Mexico and provided information on transactions made by Company A. Extract of the SAR of Company A, received by UIF. An inspection visit was made to a client at the address it had reported, which was considered a virtual office as it was detected that the premises were actually non-operating. Instead, a company renting virtual addresses was found. The legal representative of the company could not be found. Transactions performed by the client corresponded to those a trading company, which sends wire transfers to individuals and legal entities with a diverse range of economic activities, including commercialization or textiles, jewelry, real estate, investments, hotels, airplanes, commission agents, and household products. It has performed structured wire transfers to many companies abroad. Some transactions were conducted in an address different to the one reported to an individual who has requested wire transfers to 199 beneficiaries, individuals, and legal entities with different economic activities located in Ireland, Israel, Panama, and the United States. The client had requested 440 international wire transfers for a total amount of 13 million U.S. dollars during the last two months. Hence, the UIF investigated Company A in its database and other sources of information and requested all the financial institutions to provide any information available from this target. As a result, a link between Company A with other four entities was discovered. These companies had common shareholders or legal representatives, same addresses or phone numbers, interrelated transactions or similar transaction profiles. At this stage, the UIF was convinced that there were enough elements to build a successful case and that an active partnership with U.S. authorities would benefit the investigation. A bilateral task force was formed by the financial intelligence units and offices of both Mexico and U.S. general attorneys. By further investigating companies A through E, the UIF identified three other entities involved in the money laundering scheme. Company F and Company B shared a common shareholder. Company G had financial relations with companies A, B, and E. And Company H had the same address as Company C, and they maintained financial relations. At this point, the UIF and FinCEN began exchanging information through the Egmont Secure Web. The UIF's first request to FinCEN was submitted on March 13th concerning seven entities among companies A through H. FinCEN provided 70 SARs linked to the target companies and identified 199 subjects who were conducting transactions through 92 accounts at 21 financial institutions. The second request was made on May 2nd concerning company F. FinCEN identified an additional 96 subjects 38 accounts and 5 institutions. The last request was made on May 20th concerning two entities other than companies A through H and six individuals. This information was crucial to confirm the network's leader, Subject Beta, identified as the director of several suspected shell companies. The documents provided by Mexican financial institutions identified the Subject Beta only 
as a contact of some of the companies A through H. This was the first time his name was identified in the investigation. Since he was not a visible actor in Mexico, he was not a shareholder or legal representative of the target companies, nor had links with the accounts held by them. Next, the UIF's analyst quantified the international wire transfers and identified elements to initialize prosecutions. The key findings are as follows. The target companies had 45 accounts in nine banks. The companies made 5,442 international wire transfers during 2010 and 2013, representing a total amount of 263.1 million U.S. dollars. The transfers involved 42 countries and over 1,500 individuals and entities as beneficiaries. The main destinations of these transfers were the U.S., Hong Kong, Panama, Colombia, Venezuela, El Salvador, Israel, and China. The reported addresses of companies A through H were either houses or virtual offices. There were hundreds of financial reports in the UIS database involving these companies, including 144 SARS and 516 CTRs. Some of the target companies had financial transactions with organizations in Mexico and the U.S. that had been involved in drug trafficking money laundering cases in both countries. The number and amount of the transfers were not consistent with the tax reports and international trade operations of companies A through H. The first request for prosecution was submitted by the UIF to the Federal Prosecutor on September 4th. As part of the investigation, the Federal Prosecutor requested on October 1st, 2013, authorization to wiretap eight phones of relevant targets. The court authorized the wiretaps for 80 days. As a result, it was possible to determine or confirm the identity of the leader of the operation and his 38 closest collaborators. The addresses of their operating offices, the modus operandi of the money laundering scheme, Several of the companies and their accounts were about to be closed and their funds to be withdrawn and then deposited into new shell companies. The organization was hiring shredding services in order to destroy relevant documentation involving individuals known to be relevant criminals. The UIF requested to financial institutions in which companies A through H operated, urgent SARS within the next 24 hours of any transaction related to relevant accounts. Among these SARS, one was particularly relevant, for it included the names of 34 companies which were linked to company A through H. Extract of the 24-hour SAR of company F received by UIF, where the new 34 companies were identified. 24 hours report, Company F is related with other 34 companies, mainly by diverse types of financial transactions, such as checks and national wire transfers, as well as common legal representatives, addresses, or phone numbers. The new 34 companies were searched on the UIF's databases obtaining relevant results. The companies had 68 accounts in 10 banks, and there were 66 SARs and 343 CTRs related to them. With these new elements, the UIF proceeded with a second request for prosecution on October 29, 2013, involving the additional 34 target companies. The next day, the federal prosecutor requested a search warrant for the two addresses identified as the operating offices, which was granted by the competent court and executed on October 31, 2013. By searching the premises, the following was obtained. 
More than 200 used new checkbook vouchers, showing that the companies aim to avoid AML and CFT preventative controls of financial institutions. Over 50 electronic internet banking tokens. More than 150 empty binders with the names of their clients, although their contents were shredded. Evidence of the falsification of firms for issuing checks. Multiple certificates of incorporation for legal entities. Numerous printed emails with instructions for transactions, which functioned as the support records for all financial transactions made by companies A through H and other shell companies. A high volume of false invoices and their classification by company, which were color-coded. Considering that many of the relevant companies had closed or were in the process of closing, and had the intention of moving their funds to other companies prior to the search warrant, the court authorized the federal prosecutor's request for the seizure of 13.4 million U.S. dollars, deposited in 39 accounts at seven banks, plus the two real estate properties where they operated from. When the offices were searched, 38 individuals were taken into custody for interrogation. Two of them, the leader of the money laundering scheme and one of his collaborators were held in custody for two months upon restraining orders, while the others were let loose pending further investigation. On January 10th, the competent court determined that there were enough elements to imprison the two individuals under restraining orders, and on January 17, 2014, the court confirmed that there were enough elements to proceed against them under the charges of structuring and operating a major money laundering scheme and organized crime. At the same time, the court granted arrest orders against four other individuals who are in the process of being located and also imprisoned. Additional actions might follow in the next few months, both in Mexico and the U.S.